Life seems to me to be gross, anxiety-provoking, and hilarious most of the time. But also, when you take away a lot of the human pettiness, there's these little tiny kernels of beauty that make you realize that all of your concerns were sort of silly. I started out as a fine artist, so I liked doing drawings. And that eventually, I think, became an interest in motion because every drawing has a certain degree of an illusion of motion. And I think animation sort of grew out of that because I wanted literal motion. In my early work, it, there was a nice dichotomy between cute cartoons, but then more interesting, dark, philosophical underpinnings. Maybe not dark, maybe more pretentious, but philosophical underpinnings. Specifically, I think existentialist philosophy. Maybe a little bit of Buddhism, too, because I think that helps drive my work when it's abstract to give it some sort of metaphysical content. My work has more recently been interested in trying to create a film that will allow it to indulge itself and not myself. So I look at the first few marks and then I try to see where it wants to go. And I try to let that guide my hand rather than how I'm feeling on a certain day or how I felt some day before. When you're in a truly creative state, it's not necessarily about being inspired, it's just about being playful and being able to do things without worrying about the consequences. And I think that's when I create my best work, is when I'm not limited by trying to express something. My abstractions are revolts against the narrative while also understanding that they're participating in a narrative medium. I think sparks of inspiration can work for drawings, because drawings can be rather quick. But for animation and filmmaking, it, I think it's very hard to preserve that spark of inspiration. I have to be able to rely on my process to propel me forward and not myself. And my process usually involves starting from a drawing and then making an animated loop of that drawing. And then those loops become these little engine pieces that can sort of propel the film forward. And then I depart from the loop structure. And when I feel like I know where it wants to go, that's when interesting things can happen. I don't think what I'm trying to say is very important, usually. Most of us, even really sophisticated artists, we usually say the same thing over and over again. And I don't want to say the same thing over and over again. That's why I rely upon this abstraction process to propel itself forward, so that hopefully something new can happen. I think that animation is stronger when it is not necessarily trying to replicate reality. Because ultimately, it is pure movement, and it can do whatever it wants to do. So even if you start from reality, I think it's important to break down reality into its essential parts and to reshuffle it into something that is more uniquely animation, which is something that focuses purely on movement.